Okay, these are the coins of the periodic table. Rather interesting series of coins, distinctive not for when, where, how they are struck so much, as by what they are struck out of. Well, we don't have any call any coins for a column that would go here. That would be for lithium and uh, sodium and uh, well, let's see here. What would be next? Nineteen potassium, rubidium. Um, cesium or francium. Okay, we don't have any of the alkaline metals. However, we do have the alkaline metals, at least other than uh, radium, of course, beginning with beryllium. So that is, that is a coin made out of beryllium. Now let's just look at a typical one of these coins. As you see, it has the element name, it has its melting temperature, its density, its element number, the chemical symbol on it, and the atomic weight. On the back side of all of these, they look the same. It says the elements. Of course, here they had them arranged a little bit differently because you've got a long row of uh, lanthanides and actinides that are kind of long to, and hard to put in the correct sequence. And as you notice, the last four in the lower right of the main thing, those are elements that hadn't been yet discovered when these were started in 2006 but they all have the same little design. Now, we have to come all the way after element number four to over here, element number five. It's very difficult to see this, but I'm gonna to try to highlight it a little bit. You can see the B of boron. 2300 C is its melting or vaporizing standpoint and so forth. And like the others, it has the same design on the back, but very hard to see because bor boring is just a very, very difficult uh, element to see. Then we have number six, carbon. He's also a little hard to see. Okay, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are all gases, so there's no sense trying to make coins out of those. And we've already indicated we don't have sodium. We do, however, have magnesium. So there it is, Mg element number 12. And then, next thing over, we have element number 13, aluminum. We don't have a coin yet made out of silicon, but we do have a coin here made out of phosphorus. Now that's not, that it's red phosphorus, but I suspect it's in a substrate, as is also the boron too, so they're not really pure coins. They had to make them, put them in sort of a carbon-based substrate of some sort to kind of hold them together in a lack of coin. The carbon could be arguably spoken of as being such a substrate, but since the substrate is carbon-based, it's still mostly carbon. Then the next coin over here, harder to see, actually, strangely enough, is the S for sulfur, element number 16. And that really is just pure sulfur. And again, 17 would be chloron, that's a gas, and so is 18, that is argon, a gas. 19, potassium is an alkali, I've already indicated I have no alkalis. And here's number 20, it's calcium. You notice they had to put it inside this long glass case so they could seal it in a vacuum so that it won't um, oxidize, because it will oxidize. And they had to seal it in a long container because they put the coin in one end while still melting the other together. So that's number 20. Now you skip way over past all the lanthanides and actinides, because this is where the break really goes, in case a lot of people may not know that because of the way they cut it up. The next thing over here is scandium. They use that in some contemporary electronics. He's in line with yttrium and lutetium. So we'll get back to those shortly, but that's where the scandium really lines up. Then there's titanium, vanadium, that's kind of neat, sort of a bluish color to it. Chromium, somehow you'd think it'd be shinier. This is chrome plating and all. They haven't yet made a coin for uh, manganese. So they're hoping to have one soon. Iron, just simple pure iron. Actually surprisingly rare to find in pure iron. Usually it's alloyed with other things like carbon steel and other things. Cobalt and nickel, okay. And this is copper. Obviously, the color makes it quite clear. And notice here, rather interestingly enough, this is the moneyed metal because it's in line with silver and in line with gold. 
So anyway, there's copper and there's zinc. That gets used a lot in money these days too, by the way, now, especially in our pennies. Okay, cadmium. I use this little hint. Let's see, cadmium and mercury. We'll continue that. Okay, uh, this is gallium. Now, this is a really strange metal. I'm not going to try to melt this coin in here. I could probably melt it if I just held it in my hand for very long. But this, the casing, the acrylic casing itself, actually holds the shape to keep it from actually losing its shape. But I'd rather not. It expands when it when it melts. And once again, I don't have germanium. I also don't have arsenic. Those haven't been made into coins yet. But here's some selenium. It used to look like a piece of black plastic, but it's kind of, I don't know, oxidized or something in the years since. Then there would be bromine, which of course is a liquid. And then would come next uh, argon. And then coming around again, yeah, I don't have any rubidium. But I do have strontium. Now, strontium is kind of neat as a pure metal. It actually has a reddish color, or pinkish reddish color. You know, you wouldn't mistake it for copper, but it is kind of uh, interesting to see how that color is similar. As you can see, it also kind of tends to shed. We all have the same trademark back, though. Okay. Just thought I'd show one just to kind of indicate that. That's number 38. Now 39 is yttrium, and 40 is zirconium, and 41 is niobium, 42 is molybdenum, 43 obviously isn't here, technetium is a radioactive metal and practically impossible to obtain, 44 is ruthenium, it was an interesting challenge making a coin out of that stuff. They had to make a powder and just compress it together really hard. Uh, rhodium. This is actually a fairly rare metal, so this is a somewhat pricey coin. Several hundred dollars. Palladium. That's a couple hundred dollars worth. Um, and silver. Surprisingly small amount, but it's really about the size of a penny, as you could probably guess. Okay. Cadmium. Yeah. Like I said, they use that in control rods of nuclear reactors mainly, and some paints such as cadmium yellow. Indium. This stuff is so soft, if you broke it out, you could bend it with your bare hands or cut it with a butter knife. Really crazy stuff. Okay, tin. You've heard of tin cans, right? Well, not too many tin cans actually have tin in them. They used to have a little bit of tin in Lincoln pennies until 1962. Here's antimony. So that would find its well in things made to things like certain makeups and things like that. And then tellurium. Now, tellurium originally existed in yet a different form before they figured out how to do this. So here's another tellurium, again, made with a carbon, carbon substrate. But you can see it is it's still a tellurium, 127.60. 127.60, let's see, 450 degrees C. Four hundred fifty degrees C, and so on. So that's the original tellurium coin they made. Again, it was just bits of tellurium suspended in some kind of a carbon-based substrate. But later on, with this whole powdered metal compressed together technique, they've been able to make an identifiable coin of pure or super close to pure tellurium. So again, you got some uh, liquids. Uh, Gases, I don't know, astatine, no, not astatine, iodine, and uh, there's no iodine coin yet. And of course, it's still a noble gas, xenon. And over here, we don't have any cesium. That would be wildly dangerous stuff. Okay, so here, barium, maybe we can make it a little more obvious. There, you can see the BA and the 56. It says barium. That too has a very strong tendency to oxidize. So much that even though there's virtually none in there, just a few small traces inside this glass ampule was enough to make a, some of it fall off as powder. It's just very reactive. And again, like strontium and calcium and one other we'll get to, they had to do it in a long case because the heat would also cause it to, uh, you know, to lose its uh, 
stability as well. Now we start getting into the lanthanides, the rare earth metals. This is lanthanum itself. Now here they sell it sealed these in these vacuum containers as well, but in this case heat is not an issue, so they can just seal it right up in there. And just and again, as you see, back side looks the same, just says the elements and shows that little uh, periodic table. Then here's cerium, and here's praseodymium, and here's neodymium. Here would be promethium, but that is, of course, wildly radioactive and, you know, has a half-life of maybe about 30 years at best, so that's kind of useless. But then we move on, samurium. Yeah, all these have to be in these glass containers or they will deteriorate. The worst and most rapid to deteriorate is europium. Again, this one is so delicate it also had to be put in a long container. And it still looks less than ideal, but there it is. At least they could do it. And he too has his same design on the back, like always. After that, things get a lot more stable. Gadolinium. And then terbium. And disprosium, I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right, <clears throat> holmium, okay, erbium, they all look alike, and chemically they're very difficult to separate out, by the way, tholium, yeah, euterbium, there's like four different elements named after that one little town where where a lot of this material was originally found, because there's you, you got yttrium, you got euterbium, and uh, you know, and erbium, and where is he? Terbium are all named after that town. That's four elements named for one location. Anyway, and finally we start getting into the very last one that lines up with scandium and yttrium itself, and that is lutetium. It's almost stable. You really, it's stable enough you could you, you don't really need to. You know, it'll pretty well keep. Now we move into the next category here, hafnium, because it's, it often occurs with uh, zirconium and it's very difficult to separate out, kind of like the other half of half of zirconium, if you will. And then the next would be tantalum, a rather interesting metal because it is so unreactive you can use it in things like uh, bone uh, replacements and other places that interact with human tissue. And, well, they don't interact, they just be in there and it, it does not interact, it's totally inert. But you, you know, can hold something together like in a skeletal manner or something. Now the next thing after that would, would have been tungsten. Yeah, they're still trying to figure out a tungsten coin. They're, they worked hard at that, but it hasn't yet happened yet. Rhenium. Now, rhenium is kind of cool because this is the last element ever discovered that's stable, that has stable isotopes. So, that's rhenium. He's in the same column as would be um, technetium, which is radioactive, and manganese, which they still haven't figured out how to make a coin for it. The next would have been osmium. They may figure that one out soon, but it's not here yet. Uh, here's in iridium. This one, again, they had to do with that compressed powder thing and technique. Now we get to platinum. This is just simple platinum. And probably, you know, several hundred dollars worth, I might add, even though that. And then, of course, gold. A very distinctive color. We all like gold. Let's look at the back of that. It looks really lovely because it's, it's distinctive yellow color. It's just always so neat. This one, of course, is mercury. You can't really make a coin out of it, but you can kind of have a container like this and have an equivalent amount of the material just kind of encased in there in such a manner you can watch it flow around in there. So at least that keeps it safe and protected, but it's not uh, going to look like a coin. Thallium, now this would be a pretty dangerous chemical, but it, and very reactive. It oxidizes easily, but it's protected and protecting by putting in this acrylic cylinder. Usually when you buy this, you don't get a pure coin of thallium. I had to ask very nicely and that they were kind enough to do that for me. Normally you just get a metal coin with a, with a thin layer of thallium deposited upon it. But this, I'm happy to report and very thrilled to be able to say, is a coin of actual solid thallium. So, pretty cool. And then this is lead. You can see the PB. Um, lead tends to oxidize. They probably should put that in a container. And then, after that, comes bismuth. There's nothing beyond, because uh, polonium would be radioactive, as would be astatine, and um, 
radon and radium and uh, francium and actinium for which the actinides are named and uh, let's see here that'd be 89 90 is thorium 91 is protactinium 92 is uh, uranium 93 would be neptunium 94 is our famous plutonium 95 would be americium you would find that in your uh, smoke detectors but uh there's there's no way you you couldn't have a coin of that stuff and so on it goes fermium einsteinium mendelevium laurentium and all these others that have only been discovered more recently so there it is a very unusual set of coins unusual for what they're made of rather than for where they're struck or how well that's enough for that